Hello everyone, my name is Fabian Hillman. Today I uh, will be presenting on behalf of Dr. Rezi from University Putra, Malaysia and Dr. Jong from Texas A&M University, which both are the co-author for this work. And before I move on any further, I would like to uh, thank everybody for coming to my talk today. And so today I would like to present to you our work in the potential of crystalline material called zif aid for membrane-based applications with molecular sieving effect um, targeting high hydrogen permeability. I will start by introducing the importance of membrane as a new separation technology. Then I'll discuss about the crystalline material called zif aid as a potential of emerging membrane material which then I will discuss about our work in the synthesis of this ZIF-8 membranes followed by their separation performance. And finally, I will wrap up with conclusion and acknowledgement. One of the drive for membrane development is because of the increasingly high energy demand from our current way of separating chemicals, which are typically commonly done using a distillation system. And to illustrate this, one of the report that was published in Nature uh, showed that about half of the energy consumption in the industrial sector in the US typically comes from the separating of the chemicals. And in totality, this would equate to about like 15% of the total energy uh, consumption in the US. And this incentivize the development for membrane, which has the potential to save up to 90% of the um, energy as compared to the traditional approach of distillation. And this high energy demand is even more intense for the light gas um, separation, such as for the hydrogen comes from the output of methane reforming or water gas shift reaction. Um, and this is solely because we have to rely only on the expensive approach of absorption or cryogenic distillation. And so in light then of this, we will focus our study um, today um, that I'll be presenting to you is just in the separation for light gases, in particular for hydrogen and CO2 using membrane. One of the most common membrane material is made out of polymer, and this is because of their ease of fabrication and uh, relatively low cost as compared to other material. However, there was a study done by Robeson which shows um, some limitations and drawback of polymeric membranes for separations. And you can see here on the figure on the right, we can see that um, these are a collective of polymeric membrane for the separation of hydrogen and CO2, where on the y-axis are shown the hydrogen and CO2 selectivity, and on the x-axis is the hydrogen permeability. And if you sort of look at this um, uh, figure closely, you can sort of see some sort of um, invisible line that is kind of limiting the performance of these polymeric membrane, which later uh, Robeson called it as a polymeric upper bound, um, in which that there is some sort of trade-off mm -hmm. effect where a high selective polymeric membrane have to give up um, the high permeability and vice versa for the high permeability membrane needs to give up uh, low selectivity uh, essentially. And because of this, um, this drives many researcher to look into or explore more of uh, membrane material that can push beyond this upper bound limit and have, uh, have a better performance for the hydrogen and CO2 selectivity. ZIF-8 is one of the material that recently gained popularity for light gas separations. And this is because of its crystalline nature allowing it to separate gas mixtures through molecular sieving effect, which essentially allows it to target uh, better separations. And if we try to map some of these ZIF-8 membrane for the hydrogen CO2 selectivity on the Robeson uh, plot, we can see that 
some of these ZIF8 membranes can push well beyond the polymeric upper bound, which um, can achieve both high selectivity as well as um, high permeability um, for the hydrogen CO2 uh, separations. So what is ZIF8? Um, it is essentially a subclass of MOFs or metal organic frameworks where the ZIF itself stands for zeolitic imidazolate framework. And it is a crystalline network um, that is constructed by repeating units of metal centers bridged by an organic linkers or organic ligands. And the ZIF itself has a unique feature where their arrangement are similar to those of zeolite. And it also has an attractive features where their chemical and thermal stability are actually higher as compared to a lot of their counterpart of MOFs. So ZIF-8 in particular is interesting for uh, light gas separations or small gas molecules because of its small window aperture of around 3.4 angstroms that is suitable for wide range of gas molecules while also having a large cavity that can promote high molecule diffusivity um, that essentially can improve the membrane productivity. And if you see the figure on the right, we can see that the window aperture of the ZIF-8 falls kind of like at the borderline of the CO2, which can hold back a lot of those CO2 while still allowing most of the hydrogen to penetrate the membrane network of the ZIF-8. In general, the ZIF-8 membrane needs to be supported on some kind of substrate for mechanical integrity. And the majority of ZIF-8 membrane are typically grown on some kind of um, inorganic uh, alumina disc. And furthermore, the majority of the study for ZIF-8 membrane are grown on a flat sheet or flat surface type of configuration. However, there are two main drawbacks for these approaches. Um, the first one is that the typical um, alumina or ceramic disc that is used for as a substrate um, is too expensive for the membrane commercialization and needs to be um, replaced by something that is cheaper, such as polymeric um, support. And the second one, in order to achieve the highest and most efficient uh, membrane packing density in a module, we have to choose a new type of configuration such as hollow fiber as compared to using something like flat sheet or flat surface type of configuration. So there have already been few works where ZIF-8 are grown on a polymeric hollow fiber. For example, Cacho Bailo et al. have attempted to grow ZIF-8 on the polysulfone hull fiber support for hydrogen CO2 separation. However, their performance of the membrane fell short of the polymeric upper bound, which defeats the purpose of using ZIF-8. Uh, Ho et al. was able to improve the ZIF-8 performance by adding extra step of pre-functionalizing the PVDF layer with APTS uh, titanium dioxide, which can give a better anchor for ZIF-8 to grow as a continuous membrane. Uh, however, this extra step is not that ideal for commercialization purpose as the use of APTS would not be that environmental friendly. Um, it is important to highlight also that these two works are synthesized through an in-situ method, which oftentimes have some reproducibility issue. Um, so based on these studies, we designed a simple secondary growth synthesis for ZIF-8 membranes on polymeric support that are much more reproducible for hydrogen CO2 separation. And in this work, we'll be using a PVDF, a commercially available ultrafiltration membrane, because they are cheap and inexpensive, um, allowing our method to be easily scaled up. In addition, we also aim to use a simple synthesis using a more environmentally friendly solution, such as water. As shown in the images, our method involves two-step synthesis. First, we deposit uh, seed layers under solvothermal reaction, which is a critical step to obtain a thin, high-quality membrane layer. In order to achieve this, 
um, we specifically choose a PVDF, which has a lot of hydroxyl terminating group that can essentially act as an anchor point for nucleation of ZIF8 seed crystals to grow. And once we achieve a high quality seed layers, in the second step, finally, we can easily further grow the seed crystals into a high quality continuous polycrystalline ZIF8 membranes. And so after the synthesis, we confirm the presence of ZIF8 layer grown on the PVDF support through XRD and FTAR. And as shown by the XRD, the ZIF8 membrane peak pattern um, resembles a combination of both the ZIF8 peak as directed by the simulated peak, and as well as the white peak coming from the amorphous um, PVDF support. Uh, one thing to note, um, the peak corresponds to ZIF8 becomes more intense from the seed crystals to the membrane, which this just indicates the successful growth of the seed to become a larger crystals that can be uh, essentially used for the membrane um, separation. And also sh as shown by the SEM images um, on the bottom right, we can compare the surface of the PVDF support um, before and after the seeding process, in which um, after the seeding process, the PVDF support are well covered by small tiny ZIF8 seed crystals, um, which would be important as a foundation for our secondary growth step to essentially create a high quality polycrystalline membrane. And also during the second growth process, there are actually multiple parameters that um, can be considered for the final quality of the membrane itself. And we found that one of the parameter that was uh, critical is the flow rate of the secondary growth solution um, in which if we flow too little um, of the solution, the seed crystals did not grow properly. Um, and on the other hand, um, flowing too much of this uh, solution would lead to a uh, too thick of a membrane that can um, reduce the, our flux and productivity. And therefore, in our study, we found an optimized condition for the flow rate of the growth solution to create a thin, um, but still very well intergrown and high quality of a polycrystalline ZIF8 uh, membrane that we further essentially use it um, and uh, test it further for the um, gas separation purposes. Um, so uh, in here, we try to test our ZIF-8 membrane on very small gases, um, such as hydrogen, uh, CO2, nitrogen, methane, propylene, and propane. Um, and there are two main things that I would like to point out in here. Um, the first thing is that um, our ZIF-8 membrane showed a separation factor higher than that of the Knudsen's activity. And this indicates that the ZIF-8 layer that um, we synthesized for our membrane um, is of a high quality and separates gases based on molecular sieving as opposed to uh, through the Knudsen diffusion type of process. Um, and the second that uh, is that if we compared our membrane performance um, with other um, published work, um, as shown on the right, we can see a well comparison of um, our ZIF-8 membrane performance where the permeance of each of the gas tested um, goes down as the gas molecule size increases um, at the improvement of the separation factor as well. And when comparing our membrane with other ZIF-8 membrane, for the hydrogen CO2 separation, we can see that our membrane is first performing well beyond the upper limit of the Robeson line. And second, our membrane also performs comparably um, as compared to other high quality of the ZIF-8 membrane that are also above the um, Robeson plot, uh, Robeson line. Um, and one thing to point out is that Due to the fact that our ZIF-8 was grown through a robust seeding step, followed by this facile secondary growth, we're able to easily reproduce um, these membranes with the high quality. To sum up my talk, 
Um, today, I've presented to you a relatively new type of moth called ZIF-8, which has the potential for the light gases separation, particularly for hydrogen and CO2 separations. Um, and I've also discussed some of the limitation for this ZIF-8 membrane material um, as a commercialization purposes, uh, which we attempted to tackle them through our approach of a robust and fossil secondary growth synthesis of this ZIF-8 membrane on a relatively um, and commercially cheap available polymeric support such as PVDF, um, while also having a high reproducibility performance. And furthermore, we were able to also have a ZIF-8 membrane with high quality that can perform uh, among other uh, published work of the ZIF-8 membrane with high quality as well. And finally, I would like to uh, thank my advisor, Dr. Zhang, among with um, our uh, my lab mate um, that have supported this work and along with all these funding agencies that um, also support this work as well. And finally, I would like to thank all of you for listening to my talk and I'd be more than happy to take any questions.